that and that and that they they tried to cover up where that money had come from. They initially listed it by the, uh, at the Clinton campaign as having come from the American Muslim Council, although later they said that was described as a typographical error. But it was Mr. Al Moody uh, who gave the 50 grand to Hillary. Now, there's a big investigation underway, and we are trying to get a handle on this thing and find out what do we do about all of this in a war on terror with this question over terrorists within our midst and is there a religious connection and should we be suspicious of everybody who's Muslim or not and what is the role of Islam so Graham Fuller is <laughs> under this vast encompassing umbrella <laughs> he's the guy who has the inside story he's written a, a, a book called the future of political Islam and uh, Graham Fuller you uh, you were um, uh, by the way good morning Good morning. Good yeah. morning, Grandpa. You, your credentials um, involve being the, let's see, vice chairman of the National Intelligence Council at the CIA. Right. Okay. Among uh, many other things. Right. <laughs> yes. But you have lived uh, in Islamic society. Correct. All right. And w are there generalizations that we should or could make? from your observations generalizations uh, about what was the Islamic issue? movement and whether it is something that is a danger to a democratic society in general well look um, I mean first of all I think we have to proceed from the understanding that the, the Muslims around the world now are in a state state of extreme anxiety and concern and feel tremendously under siege uh, the, the, because of the the terrorism of bin Laden and the response of the war against terrorism and and two US wars now against Muslim countries in which they've been defeated and humiliated so there's tremendous uncertainty on their part as to where they're going and who are they and is Islam the banner that they should be following. Look, the vast majority of, of Muslims everywhere uh, oppose terrorism. It's a tiny handful, but, you know, even if it's 99.99 who are peaceful, it's that 001 percent that is capable of wreaking havoc, and that's obviously Washington's chief concern. Are you a well, Muslim? No, I'm not. You're not. The, but the articles in the paper today are about Mideast public opinion, and they say that displeasure with the U.S. policy has destroyed U.S. image in the Muslim world, that the majority of the Muslims now view Washington with disfavor and are angry. That's absolutely correct, and I think anybody who's been out there uh, in the region knows that I'm out there all the time, and these are people who are friends of mine who are just telling me, look, you know, things are getting out of control, and people are really very angry. These are longtime friends of the United States, many of them educated in this country, etc. I think there are at least three key areas in which there is a concern for the United States. Uh, first, uh, most of these countries are under uh, authoritarian rule, t you know, tough guys who are friends of the United States and uh, Muslims say, you know, why are you support, you, you claim you to speak for democracy and yet you're supporting our dictators. There's a great deal of anguish over the fact that they see the United States as virtually 100% on the side of Israel in the Arab-Israeli uh, conflict. So that is a long time bleeding wound when they watch Palestinians under occupation for 35 years. And finally, I think they just feel we don't live up to our own, uh, in their view, don't live up to our own values. That we we talk democracy, we talk human rights, but yet we're quick on the trigger and invading and, and, and occupying them in ways that uh, is bound to spark reaction among even, even moderates. So they perceive us to be hypocritical, uh, while many of U.S. citizens perceive them to be hypocritical. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah. We, Plenty of blame all around. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, is there a solution to this? I mean, are we going to become an anti-Islamic nation? Or do you fear that that's where the U.S. is headed? Or are they going to be just anti-U.S.? And what do I'm American Muslims do? I'm concerned that we've got to make sure that this war against terrorism um, recognizes many of the legitimate grievances that Muslims feel on their side. It's not that everything that they, all their criticisms of us are correct, but we have better be aware and sensitive of the feelings of a billion people out there um, who have issues that we have to address, including those of democracy, why we support dictatorships, why we can't be a little more 
balance between uh, the Israelis and the Palestinians on, on that problem. I think if we can make progress in those areas, uh, we can begin to, to, to start rolling this back. But, you know, it's going to be a long-term process. Can I, and, look, can I ask you, though, um, uh, Mr. Fuller, September. why it is that we don't see, and this is a criticism brought up uh, frequently in this forum, mm-hmm. why we don't see condemnation by peace-loving uh, Muslims of the terrorists. It, it appears that they seem r- reluctant to criticize the terrorist Muslims, and and we're we're waiting for the outcry. The the the, the hey, we uh, the, those guys aren't us. Where where's the outcry? Well, that's a very good question. There, first of all, at the po- at the at the personal level, you hear you do hear this when you're out there. People say, you know, this is really very bad, and we're moving in very dangerous directions. And Bin Laden has been a disaster to us. On the other hand, I mean, when you talk about Palestinians, an awful lot of uh, people say, look, we know this terrorism against uh, uh, Israelis is 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 is, r- is bad. It's against Islam, et cetera, et cetera. But they say, look, these people have been under occupation for 35 years. They're weak. They have. They can't do anything. They have no support, and therefore we understand why they were doing this, and we can't totally condemn them if they're doing this. Yeah, but can we div- can we divide can we divide 9/11 and 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 crashing airplanes into our buildings and a direct attack on the United States from American foreign policy supporting Israel? Is there any way that you can divide those two? Well, I mean, we have, the United States for, for a very long time has obviously tilted fairly heavily towards Israel, in my view. Uh, in, 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 uh, it's, we're entitled to like whom we like, but when we're called upon to be a broker between two parties, I think it has called for more balance. I, w- I fear that this long-term legacy is beginning to, to, to strike back, at least in the form of radicals who can raise this banner, and other Muslims will say, well, you know, yeah, this terrorism is isn't good, but we know we understand why it's happening. We we feel you know that we understand the, the the reasons, the rationale behind it, and that makes it harder. Any people under siege, you know, don't criticize their the unfortunately their their leaders under these conditions. That's that's a sad reality. All right, let me ask you, uh, uh, Graham Fuller. You uh, authored this book, The Future of Political Islam. In this mm-hmm. book, do you suggest? that uh, the United States, as a solution to this problem, give up supporting Israel? No, not at all. I think we're committed absolutely to Israel's existence and its security. The question is, do we support everything that every government of Israel says or wants, and particularly the present government of Israel, which is the most right-wing, uh, hardline uh, administration in Israel that we've seen yet, and in which you find tremendous uh, arguments and criticism within Israel itself that we don't see in our own press, but you can read in, in, in Israel. Well, if- where does Arafat fit into this formula in your mind? Well, that's a great question. Um, the, the Arafat, in my view, uh, is viewed by most Palestinians as sort of the father of the, Pal- of the whole Palestinian movement. He's the one who put them on the map, who helped bring them out of the woods. And there are very few people who are going to tolerate uh, his removal by foreigners, even if they're uncomfortable with this old guy. He's beginning to lose it. There is corruption around it. But, hey, you know, there's corruption all across all of the Middle East. So... Um, I don't think you can remove Arafat and get rid of the problem. The problem is desperate unhappiness on the part of the Palestinians. And, uh, you know, if you remove the leader who articulates that, the next leader is going to have to articulate that same thing or he isn't going to be leader. Yeah. All right. So in the... Sounds like there's no conclusion that we can come to that would be a peaceful conclusion. We may as well give up. Uh, no, we shouldn't give up. I think we've simply got to decide very carefully as to how we're, what kind of balance to to bring to all of this, uh, and that's not that's not going to be easy. But it's extremely important because our reputation in the Muslim world now is plummeting, as we see in the New York Times. And there's going to be a price for this. I, I fear it's going to be a long-range problem. Yeah. So it's our fault. It's our view. It's the, their view of us is what's really important, rather than um, you no. Know. I'm not saying it's all our fault. There's fault. That there's blame to be put out on all sides when you have b- policies on two sides. But what I am saying is these are the realities that we're going to have to live with, and it may be terrible realities, but we're going to have to find a way to work our way around these realities. Hmm. Uh, that's the difficulty. 
Okay, well, it's an interesting read. Uh, Graham Fuller, Future of Political Islam. Thanks. The Gordian uh, for being knot with us this that we have to unscramble. All right, Thank good. You. 722 at WLS.